Amen. Do you feel that this morning? There's an atmosphere that is here this morning that I believe God is going to move in a powerful, powerful way. How many of you are glad you made it to church this morning? Come on, you glad you made it to church this morning? Amen. Well, it's, it's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Just got back from the Latin American Conference, the first Latin American Conference in Victory Outreach. It was a powerful, powerful time, amen. Uh, right, Pastor Johnny says, Evelyn, what a what a conference it was, and man, I, I'll tell you, it was it was such a move of God there, and uh, we were in Guadalajara, Mexico, and uh, they came from all over Mexico, Cuba, Venezuela, everywhere. Even South Africa was in the building, amen. And so, man, it was a powerful, powerful time. And so it's good to be home. Keep our pastors in prayer. They're actually en route as we speak. They'll be here tonight. They're en route. And some other uh, people that have went to the conference, they're en route as well. And then also keep the team in prayer that went to West Sacramento with Pastor Gary and Sister April. They're having a crusade. It's coming up as well. Right after that, we even got some brothers that are coming home, amen, from the Victory Home. They're going to be coming home, and I know that God's going to use them in a powerful, powerful way. It's good to see Sister Eleanor in the building, amen, this morning, amen. She's one of our spiritual daughters, and the team that came with her today, welcome, 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 amen. Praise the Lord. Well, are you ready for the word this morning? Come on, Victor, are you ready for the word this morning? I want to ask you to get a hold of your Bibles and turn with me to the book of Hebrews chapter 12. Stay standing with me as we read God's word. And um, as you're turning there, I just want to thank God for, man, what he's done and what he's doing in my life. I'm grateful for my wife. I'm grateful for my family, for everything that, man, is just, it's been an amazing, amazing journey. And uh, how many of us know it gets better and better and better? And uh, I'm just overflowing. I'm, o- I'm overflowing this morning because uh, seeing what's happening there in Latin America, seeing what's happening throughout the world, and how God is using our ministry is very, very powerful. Amen. And so it's, it's, it's an exciting time to be serving the Lord. Amen. So this morning, I'm actually not, I spoke a message in the first service, but the Lord placed it upon my heart to share a message for this group of people here this morning and uh how many of us know that whenever the lord speaks you gotta you gotta move with it and so this morning i want to take a few moments and share with you a word that the lord has placed upon my heart for you and i want to ask you don't don't as we finish don't don't be in a hurry to leave because we're going to do something real special at the end of the service we're going to be dedicating some babies unto the lord amen so it is going to be a very special time So don't leave in a hurry. We want to celebrate with them. We want to celebrate with them. But I'm not going to be long here this morning. But I do want to take a moment to share what the Lord has placed upon my heart. Found there in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. And it reads like this. Look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Now go on over to 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. And it reads like this. It says, Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. Let's pray. Father, this morning, we thank you for your presence that is here today. And Lord, I just ask God that you would use my life to convey this message that you've given me to speak to your people. Father, I ask for your Holy Spirit to move through my life. Touch us, challenge us, that we would be the people that you've called us to be. So, Lord, I just thank you for the privilege and the honor to minister your word. We pray this all in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody says, and everybody says, before you're seated, I want you to say this with me. Say this with me. I want you to say it strong. I'm only going to give you one chance only, okay? One chance only. Say, I, I will, will keep, keep running. running. Amen. Give the Lord a good praise this morning. Come on, one more time. You may be seated. I want to take a few moments to talk to you about the race of faith. The race of faith. 
And how many of us know in order to run this race, we must keep running? Today, many Christians start off running. They start off running in faith, and many times some people decide to stop. They stop running this race. And there are many reasons why sometimes people stop running this race of faith. You know, it could be uh, uh, challenges. It could be trouble. It could be things that people go through. But I don't, I don't know how you look at it, but the word of God says to keep on running this race. And this morning, I, I want to take a few moments to encourage you that in this race of faith, we must run and have an attitude to win. Can you say that with me? Say win. win. Say it like you want it. Say win. win. See, we've got to run this race like if we want to win. And what was being said here in Hebrews is that in this race, we must uh, run with endurance and always looking to the author and the finisher of our faith. And how many of us know that when we look to Jesus, when we look to God, we look to Christ, how many of us know that we can win this race and we can run this race, race with endurance? I don't know about you, but I've been serving the Lord for the past 29 years, and I've had good times, I've had rough times, I've even had some bad times. But the one thing that I've learned is the only way I was able to have the endurance for this race is that I had to keep my eyes on the Lord. How many of you can agree with me here this morning? You had to keep your eyes on the Lord. And in this race, we need to run with endurance. And what was Paul saying here? That we, we are in a race and we should give it everything we got because our Heavenly Father has a reward for us. And we can win this race when we look to the author and finisher of our faith. Matthew 6, says this, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. See, many Christians stop or lose this race before they even get started. They depend on the change of mind rather than a change of heart. Or they base the change on their profession instead of the promises of God. See, when we, win, when we win this race, we must first learn how to run right. A little tongue twister. In order to win this race, we must first learn how to run right. See, you don't get in a race to lose. Come on, somebody. And it's just like you don't go to the gym to gain weight. You go to the gym to lose weight. You get in a race to win, you know. And so, you know, we've got to be able to learn how to run this race right. So a couple of things that I want to bring out this morning, and I'll be done here this morning, is I want to give you a few things that I believe will help you to run this race. You guys ready for it? First thing is this, is that we must have the right outlook in this race. The right outlook in this race. And, and Paul was saying that in this race, to rejoice, because if we run, we should run to win. And when we run in this race, you know, there's a level of faith that, is, that will be produced within our lives and to receive the crown. And you may say, well, I can't be happy or I can't run this race because I'm hurting. See, the spiritual race will require us to rejoice will require for you and I to rejoice and to be able to run this race with faith. Now, I know that many times we go through certain things. Anybody ever gone through something? Some of you might be here today and say, man, I'm going, I'm going through a lot of things right now. And it's hard to rejoice. It's hard to run this race with endurance. But I got news for you. You're here this morning. Come on now. You, you, you got out of bed regardless of what you were going through. You're here this morning. Regardless of what the enemy tried to lie to you, regardless how your body fell, and regardless of what was going on in your life, you made it to the house of God here this morning. So if you made it to the house of God, then you ought to just rejoice. Because you're already winning. You're already winning. I know things may not look that good, but when, you, when, you, when you're in this race, there's got to be a level of endurance. Philippians 4.4 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. 
rejoice. And see, a lot of times we may say, you know, I don't have a lot to rejoice about. But I think we have a lot to be grateful about. You know, regardless of what we go through and what we experience, you know, there is a reason to shout. There is a reason to give God praise. And, you know, a lot of times what happens is, is that we, we become a person that is pessimist and we look at everything negative. Come on, somebody. See, pessimist brings, brings defeat. And many Christians fail because of the negative outlook. And I know that the world, right? I mean, if you look at the world, you can't help but to see negativity all around us. But when you look at the word of God and you begin to follow the scriptures and you begin to, to look at how God is able to do something powerful within your life and raise you up, how many of us know that we can have the victory? Regardless in a, in a world that is all messed up, we can have the victory. And the thing about it is it all depends on our outlook. It really does. It depends on our outlook. The definition of pessimism is a tendency to see the worst, expect of the things, or believe that the worst will happen. A lack of hope or confidence. You ever been around somebody that's just negative? Don't look at your neighbor. You ever been around somebody that's just negative? Right? Negative Nancy, negative Nathan. You know, I don't know if you're, that's your name. I ain't talking about you. <laughs> but somebody that's just always negative, you know, and, and, and the reality of it is, is I'm sure there's always negative things around us, right? There's things that we can always see that could bring us down. There's always things that we could see that sometimes will, will, will bring discouragement or, or frustration within our lives. But I, I, I've learned this a long time ago because when I came to Christ 29 years ago, I was negative about everything. I was negative. Well, what about this? And what about this? And sometimes I got to catch myself, you know, because, again, you know, sometimes, you know, I, I tend to go back to my old ways. Hello, somebody. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Come on now. Shame the devil. Don't be lying in the house of God. Right? I know some of you negative. Some of you looking at me right now with a frown because you negative. And even yesterday, I was coming back on the, on, on, on the, on the flight, and I was texting my wife, and I said, man, who... Who, who got me this boarding pass? <laughs> I'm in the most worst seat ever. I'm in the back, and I'm in the middle between these two big brothers. <laughs> who booked this? <laughs> Stephanie do it? No, nah, I'm kidding. <laughs> you know, and, and, and she goes, what are you complaining for? I said, I'm not complaining. I'm just sharing with you. <laughs> and the thing about it was, is like, you know, all the joy and all the fruit for everything I received at the Latin Ameri first Latin American conference, I was like, all frustrated, you know? <laughs> then, and then the, and the Holy Spirit dealt with me. I said, okay, my bad. I just stopped texting right then and there. <laughs> but I mean, those. That's happens sometimes. It become negative. And so all of a sudden, it begins to throw you off. And it begins to, you know, you, you start looking a different way. Everything starts to become negative, And then all of a sudden, you start getting uh, 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 grouchy. Anybody ever been grouchy? Somebody woke up grouchy because you couldn't get the coffee. You're running late. But all of a sudden, we start thinking the worst. And I know that we could have... A lot to be negative about, but man, I'll tell you, we've got a lot to be grateful about. We have a lot to shout about. We've got a lot to give God praise about. We have a lot to be able to rejoice about. Isaiah 40, verse 31 says, but they, uh, uh, Pastor Vic said it here this morning, but they who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles, and they shall run and, and, and not faint. They shall not be weary, but they shall walk and not faint. I don't know about you, but that's a promise. That's a promise that we don't have to walk, we don't have to worry, we don't have to faint, but that we can be strengthened and renewed by the power of God. We don't have to be negative, but there are many people that walk through this world negative. 
And so their perspective messes everything up. Mark 9, 23, and Jesus said to him, if you can, if you can all things are possible for, the, for ones who believe. Psalms 119, verses 114 says, you are my hidden place and my shield, and I hope in your word. My hidden place and my shield. In other words, God will protect you. In other words, God will shield you and that God will guide you and lead you through this world. Give the Lord some praise here this morning because that's a promise. <laughs> See, when your hope and confidence is in Christ and on his word, your perspective is different. And we should live like this, you know, because the thing about it is, is if we don't change our perspective and, 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 and our heart don't change, then we could discourage others. Did you know that? You can discourage others because of the negativity that comes from our lives. And I don't know about you, but I, I, I believe if we're the light of this world and, and, and we are to bring encouragement, shouldn't we walk in victory? Shouldn't we walk in joy? Shouldn't we walk in a way that we could say, people, look at me. Now, I know that you may say, oh, that's being prideful or being, but no, 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 no. If we're going to be a light to a hurting and dying world, how many of us know we need to be a good example? We need to be people that can be looked at to be followed by. See, we must be optimistic. In other words, looking for the good and not the bad. The definition of optimistic means hopeful and confident and overestimating. Say, man, I don't like to exaggerate. I like to tell it the way it is, right? I, I'm just being real. You know what that is? That's being negative. Because the reality of it is, if you're just being real, there's so much negativity. But how many of us know that we've got to speak by faith? And we've got to encourage people by faith. I don't know about you, but somebody encouraged me. Even though I look like a basket case when I first came to the Lord. I, I, I there, man, when I came into the house of God, it was almost like you had to have faith in order to believe in me. You had to know that there was a God in heaven in order to see something good come out of my life. But I'm grateful for the man of God. I'm grateful for the people that had faith to look at me and my wife and to be able to encourage us. I know we may have brought doubt to them every now and then. I know that we may have discouraged them every now and then, but they had faith. They had faith. They had faith to believe and to trust. And I got news for you today. Now we are believing and have faith for those ones that we work with because we know that God is able to change. So we got to speak over them and encourage them. See, when we, when, when we win... And, and we run this race, there's got to be faith because in this race, we got to be able to believe for people. And, and, and here's what we got to do is we can't let the enemy tell us that we can't win this race. We can't let the enemy tell us that we cannot win this race. The word of God says that we can win. If we have endurance and we fight this good fight of faith, we can win this race. That we will have a crown when we get to heaven. And I don't know about you, but I, I, I refuse to let people tell me that I cannot win. If God says that I can win and if God says that I can make a difference and God says that he could use me, then I want to believe that. Come on, somebody. I want to be able to believe that. Don't let the enemy tell you that you cannot win. Many of you were challenged to get here this morning because the enemy was lying to you. The enemy was lying to you. He was saying things and all these different things. But how many of you are grateful you didn't listen to the enemy? How many of you are grateful that you will not let the enemy speak doubt into your life? Look at what four, uh, Philippians 4.13 says. Many of you know it. I could do all things through Christ who strengthens me. All things. And it's not because of your strength, my strength. It's because of Christ's strength that is in us. And because of that strength, we can run this race. Amen? So the first thing was, is that in this race, we must have the right outlook. And the second thing is this, is that we must outreach while we are in this race. We must outreach while we are in this race. See, Paul was saying 1 Corinthians 9.19, that we should tell people about the goodness of God. 
Why should we tell people about the goodness of God? Because he saved us and he delivered us and he set us free. Anybody here have a testimony like that? Come on now. Anybody been set free? I'm going to wait on you. Anybody been set free? Come on. Anybody been set free? You know you shouldn't be here this morning. You know you shouldn't be in that suit this morning. You know that you should probably be somewhere else all messed up. But Jesus set you free. And because of that, we should be able to tell people about his goodness. See, 2 Corinthians 5.20 says, Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. And many fail because of self-centeredness. This is a little bit of what I shared this morning. See, many times people struggle, Christians struggle, because they're so self-centered. So self-centered. They're just looking at them and what they're going through. Now, I know there's seasons where sometimes we've got to focus on us. But the reality of it is, is that when God is in the center of your life, you cannot help but to think about other people. And when God begins to fill you, you want to tell people about his goodness. You want to tell people about what he has done within your life. We've got a message and we've got to be able to preach. So we've got to be able to outreach while we are in this race. See, when we have truly been touched and been forgiven by God, we can't help but to share the goodness of God with people. Come on, somebody. How many of you have been touched by God? Come on, how many of you have been touched by God? Philippians 2, 3 says this, do nothing from rivalry, rivalry or, con or conceit, but in humility. Count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. See, when we look to God, when we look at God just for ourselves, then all of a sudden we become, it becomes all about me. But I mean, it's no God didn't save us just so it could be all about us, just so it could be all about me, just about all about you. But God called us and saved us so it could be about others. That's the great commission. That's to be able to go out and see the lost and see the hurting saved. But if you ever find yourself just always thinking about you, then you've got to take an examination of your heart. Well, where have you struggled in this race? Because when you're enduring and you're in this race of faith, you can't help but to think about other people. You know, when you, when you see yourself making it and you see yourself moving and you see yourself, you know, uh, uh, doing something great for God, you want to bring other people along. You want other people to experience the goodness of God that you are experiencing. I don't know about you, but that's how I feel. I want to see families make it. I want to see their children make it. I want to see God use them in a powerful way. I want to see them being raised up for the kingdom. We can't just keep it to ourselves. Mark 16, verse 15 reads like this. And he said to them, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. Preach the gospel. And, and, and in this walk of faith, in this race of faith, we've got to be able to share God's goodness. You know, we, we, are, we are in crusade mode, if you want to call that. Sacramento, we're there in Sacramento. We have a delegation there. We're going to be kicking off this uh, uh, crusade here in San Diego. What are we doing? We're working on Ohio. We're working on Chula Vista. Chula Vista in the building. Come on, somebody. They're in the building. So what are we doing? We're outreaching. We're evangelizing. We're preaching the gospel. Isn't that what the word of God tells us to do? To go throughout the world and preach the gospel. And we got to be able to do that. But you know, many times we, we struggle with that because of the condition that we are in in this race. Here's how you can tell you're in good shape. Is when you're touching people. While in this race. Maybe you say, oh, man, you just pulled my covers this morning. <laughs> See, when you're, when, you, when, you, when, when you're in good shape, or let me, let me say this. Let me, let, me give you, let me give you a little bit of hope. When you're in decent shape, right? <laughs> when you're in okay shape, or when you're in a little bit of shape, then you're able to bring people along with you on this journey. You ever been to the gym? You've been out of shape? How about over here? You ever been to the gym? You've been out of shape? 
You don't even get it. You don't even make it to the machine. <laughs> you just go and you just sit down. And start looking on your phone. You get on the bench. You try to push it up. Oh, let me change this. There. And then all of a sudden, you're there like 20 minutes. And then you just leave. But when you're in some kind of shape, you're able to get there, and it may hurt, right? You may be a little winded. You may even be perspiring a little more than usual than everybody else. But you're able to do something. And that's the same way as you begin to walk in the spirit. When you're in some kind of shape and God's done something within your life, you all of a sudden you start bringing people along. And you start encouraging people. Now, I know you may not have all the answers to questions that they may have. Maybe you don't have it all together, but you've got something. You're in some kind of shape, and all you know is that you cannot go on this journey alone. All you know is that something has happened within your life, and all you know is that, you know what, i got to bring some people along because if God has done it for me, he can do it for you. So all of a sudden, you find yourself bringing people along. So we've got to be able to outreach while we are on this race. See, as the people of God, we can't waste time running this race. We can't waste time. There is no time to be wasted. Man, this, this world is getting worser and worser and worser. Anybody seen the news lately? This world is becoming horrible. And that's why we cannot waste time in this race, we've got to be able to run with endurance. And as we be able to do that, our outlook begins to change. And then all of a sudden, we are outreaching at the same time. We're bringing people on this journey. And how many of us know that's what God has called the church to do, is bring people on this journey, outreach, preach the gospel, tell people about the goodness of God, see them saved, see them pursue their purpose in the call of God. And the third and the final thing is this, is that we need to expect the right outcome. Expect the right outcome. We, 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 we've got to be able to expect the right outcome. Paul was saying we run this race not to receive a perishable crown, but we run this race to receive an imperishable crown, meaning that we will endure forever. 2 Timothy 4.7 says this, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. And not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. See, many times we share this scripture at funerals. But this scripture should fuel us for where we're living today on earth. You know, many times we share this scripture at funerals. But I believe, if anything, this verse should be the fuel that keeps us moving and doing the will of God. And as we begin to get a hold of the scripture, then all of a sudden we can find ourselves running this race with endurance and running this race with joy and running this race bringing people along. Because that's what God has called us to do. He's called the body of Christ. He's called the church. He's called men and women of God. He's called the Christian to be able to make a difference. And how many of you want to make a difference this morning? Come on, how many of you want to make a difference this morning? We didn't get saved just to warm the pews, but we got saved to be able to make a difference. See, don't lose this race because you stop running. And many times we, because of what we go through, sometimes we get off track or we get off course and we start looking to other things or other things start pulling us. Because, and because of that, we, we, we start running in a whole different or wrong direction. We've got to be able to keep our focus, keep our eyes fixed on Christ. And as you do that, you will stay in your purpose. You will stay in your calling. You will stay where God has called you to be. And when you do that, you will be running with endurance. You will run with joy. And I'll tell you this, when you do that, there is a peace. There is a joy within your life that is able to raise you up to be the man and the woman of God that he's called you to be. Come on and give the Lord some praise here this morning. See, we can't be weekend runners. 
We can't be weekend runners. Only on Sunday. We cannot be weekend runners. I can't just pray on Sunday. I can't just come to a Sunday morning service and expect for me to come in and, you know, just be ministered to and somebody prayed for me. Man, if I did that, I'll be in the flesh. Right? I'll, I'll be back to the vomit that came from. Come on, somebody. This flesh is deceitful and wicked. Right? And then all of a sudden, then all, you know, then you start going in a whole different direction. That's why the Bible says, put this flesh under subjection daily. In other words, pray and get a hold of God. Man, let God work on you every single day. And as you begin to do that, you don't just become a weekend, weekend runner, but you, come, you become a man and a woman of God that endures in this race, in this Christian race. And how many of us know we need people? We need people that we can look to that are running this race with endurance. We need to be encouraged. We need to see people making it. So that we could be, there could be people that could follow after those people. See, today the world needs real men and women of God. Christians that know how to stay in the fight and don't give up when it gets tough. It's too many people giving up too fast, too easy. You know, and I know that we talk a lot about the third wave. And I, I'm grateful for the third wave. But this generation needs to learn how to fight. This generation needs to learn how to have endurance. This generation needs to learn not to just to quit on something when it don't work out for them. This generation needs to learn how to fight through the fight and how to run with endurance and not just give up when things get tough. So you're just talking about the young people. No, I'm talking about all of us. Because we will all experience and go through things. And we got to be able to be people that just will not throw in the towel when things get tough. We've got to learn how to fight and endure and go through those battles. And I got news for you. You can. You can fight this good fight of faith when Christ is in the center of everything that you do and you look to God. We're able to fight this good fight of faith. But I, I, I believe that we need to be able to get some spiritual guts inside of us. Spiritual guts, spiritual guts that when the enemy stands up to your face and things come up within you, you are not going to back down and you're not going to let anything push you around and you're not going to let anything tell you that you cannot make it because you know the God you serve and those spiritual guts begin to rise up inside of you and you begin to say, you know what God, if he did it for me then, you can do it for me now. And if you've done it for me now, I know you'll do it for me in the future so I can keep on running. I can keep on enduring. And I can keep on fighting in this fight. Spiritual guts. Spiritual guts. Uh, uh, you know, I'm grateful for the old school because the old school had spiritual guts in our ministry. And even, even the men of God before, as they began to preach the gospel, all these men of God, they, they didn't let nothing deter them or stop them. They were under the unction of the Holy Spirit. They were under the power of God, and they didn't let nothing deter them. And I believe that we need a church today. We need a people of God today that will have an unction of the Holy Spirit and not let nothing move them. Nothing move them. Today, we need Christians that have faith, that have a radical faith. Not this small faith. Now, I know that Every one of us have a certain level of faith. But you know what? Man, it, it, I look at it like this. If you're going to be in this thing, just be in it. Right? I, I, I wasn't a weekend drug addict. I wasn't a weekend gang member. Maybe some of you were. That was the Holy Ghost. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> I've seen some weekend gang members. They give up too easy. I, I, I've seen them. But in this race, in this godly race, in this race that we are in, we cannot just have weekend runners, weekend warriors. We need men and women of God that will know how to fight, that will stand their ground and not let the enemy push them around. That's the kind of church we need. That's the kind of Christians we need. We need men and women of God that will fight this good fight of faith. Spiritual guts. 
spiritual guts that make you do things, that make you step out by faith, and that make you do the ministry that God has called you to do and to be. See, faith will cause you to win this race. And I don't know about you, man, but I, I, I want to win. Anybody want to win? Come on, anybody want to win? Anybody want to win here this morning? I want to win. I want to win. I didn't join this race to lose. I don't go to the gym to gain weight. I go to lose. I go to lose weight. I'm in the race to win. I jump into some. I want to succeed. I'll tell you why. Because those are the kind of leaders I follow. I follow leaders that when they step out by faith and they begin to move and operate under the unction of the Holy Spirit, they're going to win. And that's what I've seen. That's what I've learned. That's the kind of teaching I sit under. That's the kind of people I'm around. And so if God could do it for them, how many of us know God could do it for us? Come on, how many of you know God can do it for us? Just like our pastor preached, water walkers. I know we have it, you know, there's a Run for Hope team, but I wonder if you're really walking on water. Because if you was really walking on water, you might be at a whole nother level. <laughs> Thing about it is, is that Man, if, if, if people have already set the pace, all we got to do is just follow. If our founders and our pastors are, are, are moving in a certain level, why can't we move in that certain level? Why can't you be able to operate under that same anointing? I got news for you. We can operate under that same anointing. Can you imagine if we operated under that same anointing? The damage that we will do. And so that's why in this race, we've got to be able to be people that will run this race in faith and have endurance while we run this race. I'm going to ask him to come to the keyboard. I'm going to land this message right now. Paul displayed great faith by what he did for people and the ministry that fueled his faith. See, faith is simply fuel for this race. Simply fuel for this race. But how, does, how do we get that fuel? By tapping in. How do you get fuel in your vehicle? You got to begin to put the nozzle of the gas pump into your car. You got to fill that thing up. Fill that thing up. See, the challenge that many Christians today, they only put $2 worth in. Dollar <laughs> fifteen. You've got to fuel up every day. And as you begin to fuel up every day, then all of a sudden something begins to happen within your life. I remember back in the day, in my hustling days, <laughs> put 75 cents in, just enough to get to the connection. <laughs> Don't be laughing at me. He did the same thing. <laughs> just enough to get there. You didn't even know how you was going to get back. As <laughs> long as you got there. You only get so far. We need to be able to fuel up. You got to fill yourself. You got to fill yourself. There's got to be faith inside of us. And, and as we get that faith, man, you get that faith in you and God builds you up. And you're trusting in his word and you're believing in his word. You're seeing miracles take place. You're seeing things happen within your life. Then all of a sudden you start walking different. You start walking in a level of faith and level of belief. No more negativity, but your outlook changes. Because you begin to say, you know what, if God can do it for him, then he could do it for me. You start believing it. And all of a sudden you start talking about it. Then you start walking in it. And then you're in it. Trust me, I, you know, don't let the suit fool you. I was not always like this. I wasn't 
I, I wasn't raised in the church. My father's not a pastor, but there's people in my family. I was the first one saved. But what happened was I looked to men of God. There were men of God that were preaching it and then walking it and living it. And I began to hear how God was able to do that within their life. And I began to say, you know what? If God can do it in their life, then why can't he do it in my life? And even today, the, the things that we see out there, that our, our founders and our pastors, our elders, all those people, we begin to see them. And, and God using them in a powerful way, not just with titles, but using them. And as we begin to see that, and, you know, God is able to use our lives in the very same way. But that happens when our life is fueled with faith. See, faith is simply fuel for this race. Paul's passion exceeded position. It doesn't matter what kind of position you got. Or even if you don't got a position or a title. If you've got a passion, you don't need a position. If you've got a passion inside of you, you don't need a position. You don't need a title. You ain't waiting for somebody to say, okay, it's your turn. You're just going to do it. You're just going to do it. I didn't wait for a title for me to pray for somebody, to encourage somebody. I didn't have all the answers. I didn't have elegant words. All I knew is that my heart was changed. Something was different about me. And I just begin to tell people and encourage people. And as I begin to do that, then things begin to happen through my leadership in the lives of people. You don't need a position. But also Paul was high on people and low on procedure. Oh, well, you got to do it this way. Man, if souls are in the brink, that's all that matters. Now, I know we got to we do things a certain way, you know. That, yeah, you've got to have policy and procedure. But when your heart is moved to help somebody, all you got to do is help them. All you got to do is encourage them. How many of us have not moved when the Holy Spirit has told us? I'm guilty of that. I think we're all guilty of that. The Holy Spirit has moved in our hearts, and we didn't move on him. I wonder where those people would be today. You know, a lot of times, they, oh, okay, well, I got to do this, or we're not ready, or, you know, oh, I can't get a hold of Brother Johnny. They can't go into the home right now, all these different things. That happens. You can't let procedure or protocol stop you from helping people. God has called us to help people. God has called us to encourage people. Paul was high on people and low on procedure. Paul's passion exceeded his personal preference. Paul's passion exceeded position. Paul's passion exceeded his personal preference. And Paul's passion had a high, was high on people and not procedure. What am I telling you here today? We've got this race that we are in. This race of faith is so important because there are lives that are depending on how we win. There are lives that are depending on how we win. There are people that are looking to you and I. You know who's looking to us? Your family. Your family is looking to you. Your family is looking to you. See, they may not believe it just yet because they know how you used to be. Right? They know how you used to be. They, ha they know how you used to connive. They know how you used to lie and how you used to do these different things. So they're just watching you. They're just checking you out right now. And that's why it's so important we run this race with endurance. Because when they really start seeing you living and running this race and that they see that nothing moves you, nothing stops you, nothing will hold you back, then all of a sudden you begin to bring hope to them. You begin to bring encouragement to them. You begin, they begin to see something different about you. And when they see something different about you, then all of a sudden they want what you got. And then that's when their lives are changed, transformed and touched. Stand with me all over this place. So we've got to be able to run this race Run this race with endurance. 
fight the good fight of faith. Fight. Get the spiritual guts. I know many of you may say, man, sometimes it's hard. I know it's hard. I know it's a fight. But that's what the body of Christ is here for. So that we can encourage, we can pray for you, we can lay hands on you, and we can see. Because nobody could do it alone. I didn't do it alone. And I'm still not doing it alone. I've got people around me. Our ministers, we got people around them. Our pastors, we got people around them because we know that we cannot do it alone. And you cannot do it alone. That's why the church is here. That's why we have so many things to build you, to develop you, to encourage you. So that on this race, you will be able to endure. And you will be able to fight this good fight of faith. And I'll tell you why we got to be able to be that kind of church. Because God has called us to be a lighthouse to a hurting and dying world. How many of you are ready to be a lighthouse to a hurting and dying world? Here's what I want to do. I'm going to pray for some of you. Bow your heads with me here this morning. Maybe you're here this morning. Maybe you say, you know what? I've been struggling in this race. It's been a little hard for me. I don't know why, but I've been battling. I've been struggling. But maybe you do know why. You know where you're failing. You know where you're struggling at. You know where the, the downfall is coming from. And you know you've got to make a change. You know that things got to change within your life. If that's you here this morning, say, you know what? I, I need to get stronger in my walk and in my race. Man, I'm here at this altar call with you because I know some areas that I need to get stronger in. If that's you here this morning, say, you know what, God? Would you fill me up? strengthen me in this race. If that's you here this morning, as we sing this song, I want you to come to this altar. And would you just take a moment and let God heal you this morning. Let God pour out his anointing upon your life this morning. Come on. If that's you here today, step out of your 